Jen and I'm excited to share with you a new series on my YouTube channel. It's called Stash Kits, Old Meets New. Um, a few weeks back I asked my followers to share with me what their most, uh, what their requests for what they would like me to do and overwhelmingly uh, the response was to share how to make your own kits. And so I thought about doing that for a class but I I wanted to make sure that everybody could access this information and so I am going to do a series on my YouTube channel. It will begin every, well it begins with this one and I will do a new video every Thursday and it is, I already told you what it's called, um, but I'm going to show you in this video how to um, put together a kit from your old stash, or from from your stash, you can use um, whatever, obviously whatever you want. But um, I'm going to show you how I mix some of my newer collections with some of my older um, papers. I never, I don't usually buy in collections. I just buy the the individual papers that I really like, and so um, I like to mix things together. Um, companies make it really easy for you if you want to buy a whole entire line of a certain collection to be able to just buy buy that whole collection and then all of it coordinates great but um, because I don't buy that way and I really like that kind of eclectic feel the not too matchy matchy feel um, this works really well for me so today I am going to share with you how I picked the different items to go in my kit and I hope that it's helpful to you so let's get started with the paper okay so like I said we're gonna start with the paper and for me I like to start with an idea in mind or start with a paper that has a specific um, color palette to it usually or to start with something that I know I want to use. So in this instance I started with this paper and this is a paper from the We Are Memory Keepers Inked Rose Collection. Um, I think it's fairly new-ish, it's not super old. but. I knew I wanted to incorporate navy. I've been loving the the color navy for a little while now, but I don't use it um, very often in my scrapbooking. I tend towards the aquas and the pinks, and so I thought I I would start with this fun paper and uh, build it from here. Often I'll choose a paper with multi colors, like a very a variety of colors on it, so that I can build out the colors from that one piece of paper. So for example, um, a paper like this where I could pull all of the different colors in the paper for the rest of my papers. Um, florals are really great for this. Um, stripes also, you know, any paper that has a variety of colors in it. This isn't the paper that I chose to start with this time though. So I'm just going to share with you how I how I got started and and we'll go through kind of my thought process and and ideas while I was doing this. So I honestly so I knew I wanted to use navy so I started with this paper and then I kind of went through some of my papers. Um, first of all I want to say I only keep things I know I'll use and then I have a special spot in my papers where they're papers that I really still love and so I went through the papers that I absolutely loved first and so I think it's important when you're making your own kits to not use stuff that you aren't excited about that you don't like um, like I said for me I will purge anything that I don't like anyway and so this isn't usually a problem because everything I have in my stash I pretty well like um, so just something to keep in mind you don't want to get stuck with a kit that you absolutely hate because everything in it you just wish you could get rid of um, it's okay to mix a few things like that in there but you you've just got to know yourself and how you work and and if that will work for you for me I have to love the things that are in there so um, so I started flipping through my papers that I love and I came across this paper which I love and I thought that you know, I, I already said that I have a tendency to go toward aqua. Well, I thought that aqua would be a nice complement to the navy. And there is a little bit of aqua in this paper, in this little splatter here. And so I decided to incorporate this. 
And something that I pay attention to when I'm picking my papers, and you don't have to if you don't want to, but I like to look at the back side of the papers as well and see if I were to cut this paper up, would I be able to use the other side too? And so I really like the idea of using some of these tags if I wanted to. And so I just like that both sides of this are awesome. And this side of this paper is awesome as well. Like I said, you don't have to keep that in mind. Generally, I pick a paper for one side of it, and then if I get to use the other side, that's just a bonus. Another thing to keep in mind is that this is kind of a really busy pattern, and you want to incorporate a mixture of, of um, patterns. So this one is, this one's got um, large blocks of color, but it reads rather restful compared to this one. This one only has two colors, um, but this one's a lot more busy because of all of the lines going on. So also you want a, a good balance of large prints, small prints, um, prints that are easy on the eye and prints that are a little bit more busy. Okay, so the next thing that I found was this cute paper from Amy Tangerine. And this is older, it's from her Ready, Set, Go collection, which is from 2012. And I really like this pattern. That's what caught my eye originally, but then I thought, well, no, I'm going to use navy, so I don't want to incorporate a ton of black. But then I turned it over and I saw this awesome pattern, and I've been loving this kind of orangey red color as well. And I thought that would be a nice pop with the blue. So that's, um, I thought I would incorporate that. So the next thing I wanted to do was kind of find something that would pull these colors together. And like I said, sometimes I start with a paper and then pull pull the the other papers together based on the colors that are in the original paper. This time I did it a little bit backwards, but I did find this paper from Chamel that has kind of those orangey reds, it has the aqua, and it has the navy. And so this was the next paper that I pulled to go with my kit. So now I have a large floral print that's multicolored. I have kind of a tight pattern with the, these days of the weeks and it's a text pattern. I have kind of a simple pattern um, that's really easy on the eye. This would be a nice background. And then I have a, a two-toned pattern that's fairly busy. Now on this one, I really liked the back as well because it's got that that tied in navy. So both sides of this are equally awesome to incorporate into this. So then I started to struggle because I am more of a pink girl. And so I wanted to bring in some of these tones of these pinks into my kit because I love working with pink. And so I pulled a couple of papers Originally, I pulled this one, and I really like this one because it goes from kind of a darker pink, which it's not its not this red color, but it looks okay next to it, and then it fades into a lighter pink, which I really like. Um, and then I found this paper, which kind of does the same thing. It's got that darker, this one's more of a coral color, and then it fades out. And I didn't want to incorporate both of these because they're both a polka dot. I do love a dot and I almost always include a dot. Um, so I decided to exclude this one and put this one because I felt like it matched a little bit better. Um, but then I turned this paper over and I really liked the hearts on here. And it has that red color plus it has pink and it brings in a little bit of that yellow color. And so I decided to still incorporate this paper. And then if I want to use this side, I totally can. But then I've also got this side to work with. So this paper is a little bit more of an open pattern. And so far, all of the patterns that I have are really tight. So I like the openness that this brings to the other patterned papers. So I usually include 10 patterns. So right now I've got six. So I've still got a few to go here. Let me just share with you, my next thought was I needed to incorporate a yellow paper. The first one I pulled was this one, and I love to include a wood grain because while I'm looking at different patterns, I'm also looking at different textures on my papers, and I want everything to flow nicely, and I feel like a wood grain always goes. Um, I excluded this paper because I felt like compared to this kind of 
um, this is really a green yellow and this is really not um, that this didn't quite coordinate as well so it doesn't I, I know I could just not use it with this paper and I just use it with some of the other papers and that would be fine too and if that works for you then you should totally do that but I I decided to exclude it for that reason but this is an older paper from the ready set go line as well um, the next paper that I pulled so I've got a bunch of papers off to the side here that I thought about using so I decided to pull this paper from crate paper because it has that kind of more of that greeny yellow um, but I excluded it quite soon this is from this is newer paper from the Maggie Holmes confetti collection because the floral does not match with this floral and it just wasn't working for me and then even if I took this one out I just felt like it was a completely different feel from the rest of the kit this is more of a bold floral and this is more of a soft floral and the things that I have going on are a little bit more bold so that's why I eliminated that piece. Um, let me find the one that I actually did end up going with. So I found this paper and it's from Webster's Pages and it's by Allison Kreft. This is not super new. This is from the Recorded Collection, which I believe was 2012 or 13. It doesn't say on here. Um, I like this one because um, it brings in a different pattern but it also has that nice that nice color. Um, I feel like it goes well with the coloring. And it also feels like um, this is similar to this pattern in that there are big blocks on it of, of the pattern. And so I just like the way that that makes the kit feel. And the back side of it is a little bit more cream. I don't mind mixing cream and white. Um, so if I wanted to use this, I could because it does have that aqua color, but mostly I'm choosing it for this side. Okay, so um, after this, I was kind of feeling like I needed a few papers that would bring, that I could use as a base. I like using pattern papers as bases, and so I thought I that that would be something important I needed to incorporate because I'm up to seven papers now. I want to include at least two that would work for a base. And so this was the first paper I pulled because I just love, I absolutely love this paper. It didn't work for me for a couple of reasons. First of all, it just doesn't feel the same as any of these papers in the kit. It doesn't feel like it coordinates well with them. And I know if I put it in the kit, I could make it work, but it just feels a little bit off. So as much as I love this paper, I'm not going to include it. Um, Let's see, another paper that I pulled, thinking I might use it, was this one. And quite honestly, I pulled it because I know I have some photos from the Grand Canyon and my husband's wearing a red shirt and I thought that this would coordinate nicely with it, but it just doesn't match, again, it doesn't match the feel of these papers and it's a little bit too bold for a background um, for what I'm going for. So the next thing that I pulled just trying to find it here. I pulled this paper, and I really like this paper as well. This is super old, Basic Gray 2009 from their Basics line. And I really like this paper, but because it's a little bit distressed and really cream, it just didn't fit with the rest of the feel of the rest of the kit. I, I could make it work, but again, I, I excluded that one. I hope this is helpful for you to see kind of why I decided to include things. So I found this paper from, it's from the Dear Lizzie Daydreamer collection. So that's from 2013. And I really like this side and it's cute, but this is the side that I pulled it for. It's nice, subtle, it's an ombre, it's a very subtle one, but it's got that aqua color and it's just a really nice, I felt like I could bring in another pop of that aqua and it would be great. So I included that and bonus if I want to, I can use the back but I'll probably use that for a background. Um, at this point, I was thinking, do I really want this floral? So I pulled out a few other florals just to see um, what it would look like if I were to change things up. This was one of the florals I pulled, and it just it matches a lot of the colors in the kit, but it just wasn't really what I wanted. 
this paper I'm obsessed with. And so I thought, what if I changed everything? I took this paper out and I made this the floral. Or I, I could just make this my pop of navy. But then I already had this floral and I felt like it worked really well together. But these are just some options that you can decide as you're going what works for you and what you want for your kit. But I do think it's important to be excited about, about the papers that you choose. So the next paper that I pulled was this one. And it is a creamy colored background, but I decided to go with it because it's really simple, but it has all of the other colors that are in the, the rest of the papers in it. So it has that aqua, it has pink, it has red, it has yellow. So I just really liked the way that this one looked with the other patterns. So now I'm up to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine papers, and I needed one more. Let me show you some of the options that I considered that I decided not to use. So there was this one, which I think coordinates really well, but I already had a lot of aqua going on, so I eliminated that one. There was this one, which I liked because it included kind of the doodly style and also the navy of this original paper, and it had the aqua, but as I added this, it just didn't fit the feel of the rest of the kit, so I eliminated that one. There was also this one which had navy and and aqua in it, but I decided to eliminate it because I already had a polka dot. Um, this would work, but I just decided that that wasn't the final paper for me. This is another option, and I actually really like this option. I'm considering adding 11 papers to this kit. Um, like I said, I think a wood grain always goes, and I really like the light color of this one and it does have a little bit of aqua on the edges. This is from Simple Stories, A Charmed Life. I think it's pretty new. It doesn't say. So I am considering adding this one. I pulled this one, which I also really like, and I like, actually I like everything about it, and I think it coordinates really well with the other papers in this kit, but I also decided to eliminate it because I already have a lot of aqua going on. Although this would be a great addition if I wanted more papers. This was an option that I considered for wood grain. Um, it wasn't quite the right color of yellow, so I eliminated that pretty quickly. I have a lot of older sassafras papers that I need to get used up, and so I considered using some of those. It does have the right coloring, but it is a little bit too distressed for the rest of the papers in this kit, so I decided not to go with that. Um, here's another uh, yellow that would have worked, but it was another polka dot, so I decided to eliminate that one. And then I decided that something good for a background, um, I had a paper pad that is from Craftsmith. Let me show it to you. Oops, I have two paper pads to show you, actually. It is from Michaels, and it's called Gradients, and it's full of all of these awesome papers that have just gradient patterns on them. And so I pulled one of those because it kind of goes from that pinky color to a blue color. And I thought that would be a really nice background. Um, I'm not going to include it only because uh, I, I plan on adding any card stocks, like white card stock that I need for backgrounds. And so if I need it for a background, I'll just grab it. I'm not worried about that. This was another one that I thought would would possibly work, and this is from the Pink Paisley Color Wash Collection. Uh, this is from 2013, and it has just a lot of nice washes of color, just like the name suggests. Uh, and some of them are really great for backgrounds, including this one. So that was another option that I had considered for a background. Um, which would totally work. I'm not going to include it, but I just wanted to show you a few other options that totally would have worked. These are from some old basic gray paper pads, and these would work as well. So as you're looking through your items, make sure that you're including patterns that will um, complement each other. You want some that are big and bold and some that are subtle, and some tight patterns and some open patterns, and you need just a good variety of pattern to be able to get through um, your kit because 
you want to be able to make make um, pages that will that will coordinate well. So I'm actually changing my mind right now and I am going to include this paper. I think I'm going to. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, so I'm gonna have 11 papers. I'm okay with that. You can change the rules, this is your kit. So I'm changing the rules for my kit. I'm including 11 papers and a specialty paper. So if you have it, it's nice to include some sort of vellum or gold foil paper or something like that. I happen to have this My Mind's Eye Necessities blue stripe and I just love the way that it looks with the kit. It kind of, to me, completes the kit. So like I said, I'll be adding in white cardstock wherever I need to but I do like to include one or two sheets of colored cardstock in case I need to use it for, um, for like mounting photos or for cutting things on my silhouette or stuff like that. And so I'm gonna grab two sheets of cardstock that will coordinate with this kit as well. Okay, so I've decided to pull this orangey red color and then just a sheet of craft from American Car American Crafts. Um, I don't know where this this cardstock comes from. But I think that will complete my kit and I will just add or complete my papers and I'll add white cardstock where needed. So now I'm going to go ahead and grab some embellishments. Okay, so the next thing I like to do is to pick a couple of alphabets that will coordinate nicely. And I usually try to stick to one or two large alphabets and then a smaller one. Um, this time I found this alphabet from We Are Memory Keepers and it is from their farmer's market collection. It's a year or two old maybe. Um, it matched that yellow really nicely. I actually got this in a previous Scraptastic kit. I still have a lot of letters left, so I thought that one would work really nicely. This one also came, I think, from the same Scraptastic kit. These are from Fancy Pants. This is just from last year. They're orange large alphabet stickers, and that matches these colors perfectly as well. So I pulled two large alphabets this time. And then I also pulled two smaller alphabets. So I have these tiny type epoxy alphabets from close to my heart and they are just a tiny circle circle navy alphabet and I thought that would be perfect because I'm trying to bring in a little bit of that navy color. And then I also pulled these remarks from American Crafts and these are super old, oh 2012, so a few years. And they have both that orangey color, but then on the back they have this light blue with a navy letter. So I thought those worked perfectly as well. So I pulled kind of a lot of alphabets. And it's up to you, you know, how many you want to pull. I would say don't pull too many. You don't want to give yourself too many options. But I also want to say, even if you only pull one or two alphabets, don't feel like you're limited to that. If you are creating a layout and you really need a different alphabet, then go grab one. There's no rules, right? You can do whatever you want. So I just am throwing that out there. Um, don't. This shouldn't be a stressful process. Scrapbooking should be fun. And so make it that for yourself, whatever makes it fun for you. I do think sometimes when you include less, you're um, pushed out of your box. You, you need to be a little bit more creative with your supplies. So sometimes it is nice to give yourself fewer options that way. So just something to keep in mind. Um, another thing that I like to do if I have one that matches is include a six by six paper pad. So as I was flipping through my paper pads, um, I found this, from, it's Hey You from Basic Gray. It's from 2012, and it has a lot of similar colors to some of the papers in the kit. And so I thought that this would help me get some of those used up. And it's okay if I just use a few or if I don't end up using it, that's fine. But to throw it in there, it just reminds me to use it. And just as a reminder, I do have a whole series on 6x6 paper pads, so be sure to check that out. Okay, so the next thing that you want to do after you've gotten your alphabets and your 6x6 paper pad, I'm just going to stick these off to the side here. Um, I like to find a sticker sheet or some sort of embellishment pack that can coordinate. So what I found was this sticker sheet from the Simple Stories I Am collection. And as a happy accident, these colors match so wonderfully with the rest of the kit. And that just makes me so happy. Um, if you wanted to, you could 
you could pull the colors for a whole kit from a sticker sheet if you have a certain one that you're dying to use or if there's one that you want to get used up. This is a great way to start a kit as well. This just so happens that it matches the kit that I already started, but like I said, you can, you can base your kit off of a sticker sheet too. So this is a sticker sheet I'm going to use. Another, another awesome thing to include if you don't have a sticker sheet or in addition to a sticker sheet is a die cut package. And I happen to have the I am die cut shapes and so I just decided to include those because I already know that they coordinate because these coordinate. So I'm going to include those die cuts and then I am going to include these rub-ons from Amy Tan. And I think it's good to have a variety of different embellishments. I want something that's flat. I want some things that are a different texture like rub-ons. I want some things that are a little bit dimensional or that I can pop up. Um, so I'm keeping all of those things in mind as I'm choosing my embellishments. So. I've got those rub-ons. I don't use rub-ons very often, so I want to get those used up. I think they're cute, so I want to use them. Um, I did pull these. I keep pulling these out to try to use them. They are from Sassafras, which means they're really old, um, probably 2008 or something like that. And they are just a chipboard um, number sticker, and they match that orange, orange and the yellow color perfectly, so I'm going to try to incorporate those. And then I also wanted to share with you that you can use partial um, packages. So I have these notes and things tags um, and not all of them coordinate, but some of them will. And I really like to have tags because they're just another dimension. You can add um, twine or something to them and it gives a little bit of extra texture to your pages. So I'm going to only include the ones that really coordinate, like this pink will not work. But this one could probably work. This one, maybe not. This one, maybe not. Happy for you, I think that would definitely work. Um, I could include all of these craft ones. I'm probably not going to include this one that's kind of a purpley color. I think I will include this one. This three is perfect. So I'm just um, dividing up that package and I'm going to pull some of them out. And I'm fine to do that. So last but not least, my kit's getting pretty full. So I would say one sticker sheet or die cut package, or if you want to include one of each, um, one other item that's another flat embellishment like a rub-on or, a, again, choose a sticker sheet or something like that, maybe um, uh, label stickers or something. Um, in fact, I think, because I have them, I might include these. I included these in a previous kit, but I didn't use them all, so I might just throw these in. So this would be a good alternative to rub-ons, is kind of a little small label sticker or something like that. Um, something else that you can kind of tuck in, for, use for layering. And then I would always include a trim. So I'm going to include this trim. This is from, um, oh, what is there? Glitz. And this matches a lot of the colors and I loved this washi tape but I haven't used it very much and so this is just a good reminder to me to use this washi tape so I've been trying to use more washi tape it doesn't exactly match the colors here but I can selectively use it where it coordinates and then I like to include a few pieces of flare and so I just pulled all of the ones that matched the kit colors and they are a mixture of pieces from my um, Scraptastic kits. Like this is from an old Scraptastic kit. Uh, so is that one. So is that one. Um, this is from su super, super old when American Crafts did flare before it was cool. And then I have a few that I purchased on my own. So I'm going to include all of those flare, but I also give myself permission to rifle through my other flare if I need to. And I will not include enamel dots, but I give myself permission to rifle through my enamel dots as well. So this is going to be my kit. I am going to um, take a photo of it, which I'll post on my blog so that you can get a better idea of what it all looks like together. But I'm also going to um, 
put it in, I like to keep my kits in iris containers, so I'm gonna grab one of those and stick my kit in it, and then I'll show you the final um, way that I'm going to store it. Okay, so I wanna share with you how I store my kits. So this is an iris container, and I got mine at Michael's. You can um, use a coupon on them there. I think they're $10, but you can use a coupon on them. And then, um, they come with these, well they don't come with them, you buy them separately, these little inserts that have divided little um, compartments and you can move the dividers around. And so this I absolutely love. I got this idea from Nicole Jones, who is Nicole Jones 911 here on YouTube, and it has been the best tip I, I have ever gotten. So I absolutely love that. So I'll show you that in a second, but let me show you what's in the bottom here. So I've got all of my papers just right in the bottom there, my sticker sheet on top, and then any embellishments that would not fit in that little divided tray, I have just put in here. So it's basically my alphabets and my six by six paper pad. And then the rest of the stuff goes in this little tray. And like I said, the tray fits right in here. It just rests on top. It doesn't have anything to sit on, but that's fine. And I just wanted to point out, I did add, I think two things to this. So. I went ahead and divided my compartments. I took things out of packages, so I took this out of the package. I didn't take these alphabets out of the package because I don't want them going everywhere. But I've got my die cuts in this little compartment. I put my little tags in this compartment, um, my little sticker sheet here, my flare in a compartment, my washi tape. I did add, I found these two little bows that are navy that I thought I could maybe get used up. They're from close to my heart. And then this twine that I can tie the tags with. And so that is my my kit and I hope that this has been helpful. If you have any questions, leave me a comment below. And if you put together some kits, I'd love to see them and have you uh, play along with me as I work through this kit. And I will be back next week with, with some lamps to share with you. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next week.